Hello, welcome to my mess. Um, I just did a cloud pour before this, so there's a lot of chaos on the camera. I'm sorry. Sorry, but not sorry enough to waste the puppy pad. Um, you know, because it's all the same session. So this is a bloom that was a good idea, but the composition wasn't great. Most of you guys agreed to save it, um, but it's going to it's going to take one for the team. So I don't know yet which colors we're going to use, um, but I um, I wanted to use up some colors, use some new colors, so I kind of just brought a bunch of stuff in here and I have no plan yet, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so this is Poinsettia. This is a prism pour color that I've had mixed up for, I am embarrassed to even think of how long. And I had just a little bit left over, I actually used it in a commission recently. Oops, where did that go? And so I had a little bit left over, but I just had to revive it with some Josania, so now I have more than I did before. So who knows if we're actually gonna get it used up or not. So that's one color we're probably gonna use. This color is Cypress, and it's a beautiful color from Holbein, and it's also a very expensive paint, so I don't wanna waste it. So it needs, a little splash of Josanya. It doesn't really go with poinsettia too well, but that's all right. So that one may make an appearance. Um, I have a lot of colors over here who need to be used, but not all of them need to be used in this pour. So I'm either going to use Dreamsicle on the bottom or Cherry Sorbet or maybe even both for just being so inventive. So Cherry Sorbet is from the Frosted Sorbet Primary Elements set and that set most of the colors have very sparkly sparkle and I love them. The thing about that though, is if you're gonna use them in blooms, I prefer the really like large particulate stuff to be closer to the bottom. Um, Cause otherwise it can seem like it's messing up your cell structure at the top. I found a globby in my paint. But I mean, you can see why the color is amazing. So with that kind of nice shimmer, it pops really nicely through the other stuff. The only thing is, I keep finding globbies in it. So anyway, I've had these mixed up since the set came out. So I need to, <laughs> so as I want to use the new prism pour colors, and I do, I need to also use some of these other colors. So I'm going to probably use a little bit of this one. And yeah, we're just kind of winging it. I just realized I didn't bring any actual paint colors in here though, like regular paint. So let me grab one, I'll be right back. I feel like this is taking too long, so let me put my pillow paint down and we'll just go as we go, you know? So my pillow is PPG Multi Pro in Eggshell from Home Depot. I like it. Um, in my gloom mixing video that I have in the description box, at the time I was using Glidden Premium. If I were to go back to Glidden, I would probably use Glidden Essentials because it's just as good and it's cheaper. Um, but I do have a mixing tutorial if that is helpful for anyone. Oops. This MDF kind of warped up a little bit as it um, dried, so I want to make sure that it's not going to fly off of here. <clears throat> the challenges of painting. Anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm about to start a semester, so things will be a little crazy around here, but that, are, that is A-OK. -okay. And, but my days of 
posting all the time were probably limited. So I wanted to play a little bit. I did a little cloud pour a minute ago. So this is a 10 inch MDF. My dad got me a router for my birthday and I have an idea. Um, I wanted it for several reasons, but I cut my own M uh, MDF geodes, so I thought that would be cool. And um, I wanted to also try cutting my own rounds and maybe making my own cradled wood rounds with MDF so that I wouldn't, like when I use MDF to practice, I wouldn't have to use like easels and stuff. I could make little, but I don't know if it's going to work. So, you know, I say all this to say that may not be something that I accomplish, but it is something I'd like to accomplish. So he got me a router and my husband got me this circular thingamajigger that helps guide the router to cut a circle. So my logic was I could take things like MDF rounds and I could make the, the back, the cradle part, and smush them together. So that'd be fun, huh? It'd be a lot of work, but... MDF and all that stuff, wood is expensive. MDF is expensive to buy from other people. It's not expensive at the store. This is Dreamsicle. I think we're gonna put this on the bottom. However, it needs to be thinned out a little bit. This is what happens when you use up old paint. It's like a science project just to get going. So I think we're gonna use these colors I showed you guys and probably a couple of two paint colors. Um, and I, I think I'm gonna throw in a couple of the new prison pour colors. So, you know, it might be overly colorful, but my thought is that we can use up these colors. Maybe I can do another bloom and use them all the way up. Um, but yeah. So unfortunately, this dream sickle has a lot of bubbles in it now. But, um, which means I probably, if I'm a smart person, wouldn't use it. Because it's gonna go on the bottom layer and cause all kinds of problems. And I think I'm smart, but here I am about to use it anyway, you know, so see how smart I really am. Or I could use one of the prism pour colors on the bottom, which might be smarter. Smarter. Maybe what I'll do is drizzle it. It's still very thick. You see that? But it's pretty. It's like a nice golden orangey peach. I like it. I found this color in um, the Color Art Master Library, which I think has been updated to just show you all of the colors in a certain color, like family, like peach, pink, whatever. So my cypress also has a lot of bubbles. So if you hear me making noise, I'm whacking these on the table. So now I'm gonna use the cherry sorbet. So, should be really pretty. And because it's very sparkly, everywhere it peeks through should also be quite sparkly. And now I'm going to use <clears throat> the poinsettia. And I don't really want to cover this up, but I want to use this poinsettia. So now the poinsettia needs one more bloom and it will have fulfilled its destiny. And, and if I blow right, we'll still see the colors underneath. Now I'm going to do, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so I have not used Macaw Blue. I have not used SIE Berry. So I think to add some contrast to this, I'm going to use both of those. Um, so Macaw Blue. Let me add 
acai berry. So these are prism four colors. If you missed the mixing video, it's a couple of videos back. And don't forget, you can save 20% off color art using Mandy1120. Anything on the website. So this is a beautiful purple. I had mixed these up a little too um, thin initially, and I thickened them up a little bit. They're a little better now. Still a wee bit thin. So there's that one. I might need a little bit more because it's purdy, you know? And um, sometimes it's crazy how you build colors for a bloom. Like some people start with intention, and sometimes I do too. But in this case, I picked okay, which colors are almost empty, and then <laughs> so this is macaw blue, and then we're going to use cypress on the top, and the new teal indigo vivid intense from color art and i'm going to use a white cell activator and i have no room for anything over here so this is the cypress it has a lot of bubbles but because we're using it where we're using it it's probably going to be fine and even though it doesn't necessarily go super well with everything on the bottom because of where we're putting it it should be great it is not used up though, so we are certainly far from using. That's one thing people say the Shelly art technique technique is expensive, and so yes, it is, and also it isn't because once you get kind of your base of supplies, you don't use very much paint. So if I'm going to use expensive paint. I'll only use it in this technique. I'm not going to go doing flip cups and stuff with it because with this technique, it's going to last a long time. Um, but, and the other good thing about using like fluid acrylics is you can make fluid acrylics last a long time. So this teal indigo, which I didn't even show you, so sorry, is a fluid acrylic from Color Art. And so very pigmented, very beautiful color. And, um, yeah, okay, so this is already probably a super long video. So I'm going to use white cell activator. My cell activator is titanium. Crap. I just dropped my stir thingy. Almost got cell activator in my other paint. Anyway, it's M. Graham titanium white paint. You can use Amsterdam um, and Australian Floetrol. Um, I get my Australian foot call from Pixel Paint Designs. She offers my viewers a 10% discount, which is Mandy 10. So that's also in the description box. There are artists who, who make American flow trial work. My friend Sheldon is one of them. But I just think Australian flow trial is easier. So um, if you're new to blooms, you have options. Um, but, you know, Australian flow trial is expensive when you buy it, but then it lasts a really long time. So for me, it was worth it, but you have to decide for you. I, I do blooms a lot and I don't, I don't go through a bottle a year. You know what I mean? So it lasts a long time. All right, enough talking. Uh-oh.
So either my cell activator, whoa, or my paints, whoa, so lightheaded, or both are too thick. So that's why I was having trouble. And I also blew into my pillow right here. So let's see if we can't salvage this. Unfortunately, this part is rough, but let's see. Okay. So the colors are really beautiful. I mean, this part is funky and everything I'm doing is off center. Like the bloom's way over here. I don't know if I can save that. I don't think that I can. The middle has too much cell activator in one place. Um, however, I'm a little bit afraid to mess with it because um, it is, if you mess with it, sometimes it tries to travel into your paint. So, yeah, I don't know if I should do that or not. Okay, so we're just gonna try to make lemons out of lemonade, or make lemonade out of lemons. Okay, so I'm just taking my skewer and taking the edges that don't make any sense trying to make something pretty out of them. This part's beautiful and the colors actually work great together. It's this other part, but you know, we have some cells in lacing even though we went into the pillow. So it's possible that it'd be like the ugly duckling that just surprises us with its beauty. So let's see. Um, Burn it. Sorry, I had the skewer in my mouth. Let's spin it. Worst case scenario, we'll have some wasted paint. A lot of, I mean, the, the pillow paint is a bummer, right? But the these other paints were probably going to not make it if we didn't revive them and use them. So, you know, whatever. But I could tell as soon as I started to blow it, it wasn't working. So the colors on the bottom are so beautiful. I hope you can see how vibrant they are. And that poinsettia stretching out over those colors is really quite lovely. I'm trying to get some of this around the edge. Oh, I guess I really didn't need to do that. Huh, whatever. What's done is done. We do have a ton of bubbles, unfortunately. And I don't know what I did with the thing thingamahoos it. Some of these are gonna have to be popped. And I have too much paint on my hands to pause, you guys. So feel free to fast forward through the bubble popping. Um, but the colors are actually quite beautiful together. Even though like we just sort of made them go together they're pretty lovely. My cell activator is also old, so it may not be performing at its best. It's at least a month old, and that's not advisable. So let's see. I mean, the white part where I blew into the pillow, it bugs me, but it doesn't completely take away from the whole bloom. It kind of looks like it just gives some contrast and there's some sparkly color in it. So it kind of gives your eye a place to land. Under resin, it would probably not be as noticeable. Now the places where I did this around the edges, um, I think I might've screwed up. But we do have plenty of paint on here, so let's see if we can't 
redeem it. This part is gorgeous. And that poinsettia stretched out over those colors is really beautiful. So I think, I think we'll be able to salvage it. What I'd like to do is get these parts where I kind of scallop the edges closer to the edge, especially where they're really exaggerated and look like ribbons over here. You never think it's gonna look like that when you're messing with it until you get this far and then you're like, I should have just left that alone, you know? So we're gonna give it a heftier spin here. I'm trying to guard with my person so I don't get paint all over the floor. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's not perfect here, but the top is really nice. So if I can't get this where I want it, when I display it, I'll just display it with that at the bottom. Um, it's prettier than what we poured over, so I think it's a win. Oh, this right here drives me crazy. So this is why you have to pop them at a certain point. Otherwise they come through and they're like insane white dots and they're poking through in multiple places, unfortunately. Okay, we'll give it another good spin. Um, the part in the middle where I said we had too much cell activator, because we are spinning so much, it's opening up. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't try to like blow on it too much or it would have tried to travel into the color. It took me a while to figure out what caused that. Um, I would try to blow out the excess cell activator in the middle with a turkey baster and I think that's what causes it to like try to travel into the color because I would have like the most beautiful bloom and then after it sat for a second I would notice it was like it was like the cell activator was almost doing that dendrite thing into the paint colors and I was like what is that messing up the center of my bloom so the center is kind of messy because of what I was dealing with when I was blowing it out. This is really beautiful. I don't have as much of this off as I want, but if I get it off, I'm going to lose a lot of the nice composition in the middle. So I'm going to give it one more good spin and then I think we're going to take it as it is. Because much more spinning and we're going to lose our color saturation saturation and we're going to lose composition so I think it's pretty it's not the most beautiful bloom I've ever done but I think it's pretty and um, I think it's much prettier than what was underneath it so I'm gonna call it a win so let me take my gloves off I'll bring you down for a close-up and uh, yeah I think we came close to using up some more paint I may even have time to do one more for a future video with some of the same colors. I really think these look nicer together than I thought. All right, so here we go. The colors are really very spectacular together. Um, this is the part that I kind of messed up, but we still have some lacing, so it's not like a complete loss. Um, I like this. This section is the best part. So, you know, it's prettier than what we poured over. Is, is it the best bloom ever? No. What I may do for a future video is I may go again and I may use, I may thin my cell activator down with some more Aussie Floetrol and I may use a dual cell activator so we can see what it, what the difference would be. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Would you keep this one? And uh, yeah, thank you so much. If you're new, I'd love for you to subscribe. Let me know you're here. You can see that dream sickle color. You can't tell too well yet, but that cherry sorbet color will really show, there it is, as it dries and especially after it's resined. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.